think about when you think about United Way, well, I, I think about giving, okay? Uh, you know, being a teacher all my life, we always gave to the United Way, so there's giving to the United Way, uh, and that's important, uh, a big part of it. And then there's that giving from the United Way, the, what the United Way gives, uh, that, that they give to people who are in, in need, in dire need usually, in, in a situation. Uh, and, and they don't just give help, uh, but, but they also provide hope. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things. They provide hope for people in a situation may not have a whole lot of hope at that time. And, and, and so I think of that giving uh, in both ways. And, and I can relate to that. Uh, I can relate to the giving and I can relate to that hope uh, and, and what that hope does in your life. And I'd like to share a little bit of my story if you let me uh, because it, it, I think it does parallel with that. In 19, I mean, in 2005, I was coaching football, and uh, all was going well, and, and uh, as about as well as it could be, to be honest with you. Uh, I had big goals and big plans and everything else, and until one day, uh, I started having blurry vision problems. And I'll make the long story short. Uh, after about three visits to three different doctors and about two months of testing, uh, they told me I had MS. Uh, and, and so this MS was going to uh, affect my life, they told me. Uh, well, I, I kept coaching, and, uh, and, and it, at first it didn't do a whole lot, but uh, it wasn't long before my walking and my balance and my stamina just started going downhill and downhill and downhill until in 2010 I had to retire from coaching. It wasn't because I was wanting to, it wasn't because I need, uh, needed to retire or wanted to retire. Uh, I just physically couldn't do it. But I stayed in the school. Uh, they, they gave me a position in the school as kind of administrator type position, and uh, but I stayed in that one year. In 2011, I retired from that. I mean, I got to the point where I physically couldn't go to school and, and get up and get around to do, to do enough to, to doing good. Uh, so I had to retire in 2011 from all that. So I found myself at home. Uh, each day my goal was to get out of bed and to make it to my chair in the living room uh, and, and to do that I had to kind of lean against the wall. I had a walker, I had a walker at, at, at home that I needed to use. I used it at the house. So I had a brace on my left leg because I couldn't dorsiflex my foot so I had foot drop and it drag and I'd trip and I'd fall and look kind of stupid. Uh, you know, and so I had a brace, I had a walker, and, and, and I just tried to get to my chair every day uh, and get my laptop. And when I get my laptop and get my chair, uh, then I could get some work done. And that, that was my goal each day. And as I did that, I, I thought, you know, this is what I've got to look forward to the rest of my life. Getting to my chair and getting my laptop. And that's it. You know, and that, I'll be honest with you, that wasn't very exciting news to me. It wasn't a very exciting thought to think that's what I'm going to do the rest of my life is make it to the chair. And to make matters worse or to be even more discouraging, my EMS doctors in, uh, in Dallas that I went to, they, they didn't offer a whole lot of hope above that. You know, they had me on all this medication. I was getting monthly infusions and taking shots and all this stuff that was supposed to do whatever you're going to do to help EMS. But all they could tell you was, we hope it slows it down. We hope it slows it down, because I was going downhill. Uh, and I told them, if that's the best I've got to hope for? Is that you hope to slow it down? I said, is there not anything to make it better? Nope, nothing to make it better. All you can hope for is it doesn't go too fast. Well, my hope meter at that point was pretty low. Uh, it really was. Uh, there I was just going to my chair every day, getting my laptop, and, and, and them not offering any hope of getting better. But I, I wasn't convinced that was the only answer. I really wasn't. I wasn't satisfied with that answer, and I wasn't convinced that was the only answer. Uh, so that was the good thing about getting to my laptop. I could get on that laptop and, and go looking for some other things. And, and that's what led me to stem cells. Uh, I found out something about stem cells, and I found out what doctors were doing around the world. Uh, to help people. 
help people with MS and help people with other things with stem cells. Uh, and then that got me excited again. My hope meter started raising, rising. And uh, I did more and more research into it and found, found a, a place in Panama that, uh, that did stem cell treatments. And, and then I wanted to find some people who been there. I didn't want to just read it on the news or read it in the, on the online. Well, I found some gentlemen who were right there in the Metroplex, Metroplex had been there, and so I wanted to not talk to them on this on the phone, which I did. I wanted to come meet them. I wanted to see them face to face and make sure what I was hearing was right, and that's what I did. And each time I take one of these steps, I just get a little more, a little more excited. That hope meter was going higher and higher, uh, and so I was excited about that. Uh, you know, for some though. Even my wife, you know, they were a little, little less excited. They, they were a little unsure about some of these things. You know, they thought, stem cells in Panama, you know? They just weren't quite sure about that. Stem cells in Panama. They thought, well, and you've probably seen some of them. You may not, because until you kind of get on tune with something, you don't pick up on it. But... There's been lots of news stories on the news from 60 Minutes in 2020 about how stem cells are a scam and, and everything else. Uh, so so they, they had that feeling, that thought, and they'd seen some of those, you know. I'm not sure he ought to go to stem cell, get, go to Panama and get stem cells. I hear them 60 Minutes, that's not good, you know. Well, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but, but believe me, you can't believe all the things you see on those shows. <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is one of them, you know, because you're, you're looking at standing proof. Of, when you see those, if you've seen any of those 20 minutes or six, 60 minutes or 20, 20, it said, you know, well, maybe the, the place they found in Mexico, which is the one they usually find, and they, they say it is a scam. It might, there are some. But I'm telling you, there's some, there's lots of places doing stem cells that are doing amazing things. Amazing things. So don't believe all those. So they had that worry, and then, then they thought, how in the world? How in the world could something be better medically in Panama, down in Central America, America than the big, great, wonderful United States? Aren't we the best in everything, you know? There's no way they can be doing something better in Panama than we're doing in the USA. Well, believe me, they are, okay? They are. Uh, but that worry to some of them. And then there was a little bit of worry of, oh, what's Panama like? Well, I didn't know, but I was fixing to find out, you know. Okay? I didn't let all those things bother me, you know. I still plan on going. And, of course, my own doctors here in the, in the States, they work for it. Uh, when I told them I was going, uh, you know, they were, they were really against it. In fact, my doctor told me, if you go, we can't see you anymore, you know. I didn't tell him, but I thought in my mind, well, so what, you know? <laughs> what, what, what have you done for me lately? You know? As I have gone from here to here, you know, I'm not really excited about coming back. So, uh, But I did tell him this. I did tell him this. I said, what do I have to lose? I mean, seriously, Doc, I told him, well, what do I have to lose? We know exactly where I'm going to be in five years from now if I continue right here. I'm going to be in a wheelchair and... and hoping to get to my chair, my other chair at home in my wheelchair, and, and that's it. You know, all you can hope for, all you can tell me is we hope it slows it down. Uh, I'm looking for something maybe to get me better. Well, he didn't think that existed. You can't believe that stuff. Well, I said, let me take that risk, but I don't feel like I have anything to lose. So I did. So I, I was excited, and, and I made my, made my plans. I got my plans. My appointment set in Panama with the Stem Cell Institute there, and everything was on uh, on track. Uh, there was just one small problem, just one little small problem. That was the cost. Uh, that first trip to Panama was going to cost me about forty thousand dollars, and I didn't have forty thousand dollars. Okay, uh, some people in Ennis thought I did, but I didn't. Okay? <laughs> They, they thought, well, I, we're paying him that much, you know, you don't have that easy, no? It, you don't have that just sitting around. But, uh, but that's when I found out about this giving, okay? And I've been, lot to, I've been lot to, to a lot of uh, 
you know, galas and, and benef benefits and things there in town and, and uh, took part in those and that was always fun. And, but I've never been the, the person that was the benefactor of that. And, uh, but, but the people there in Ennis, the folks there in Ennis had a big fundraiser for me and they set up a fund at the bank. And, uh, and, and anyway, it just started rolling and doing really well. And people were just so, there, so nice. And people from here donated, I know, and, and coaches from all around the state. It was just amazing to me. It really was. And, and very humbling to me, very overwhelming. In fact, to the point that I got very uncomfortable with it. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it's sometimes difficult. And, and I, if you've never been there, I hadn't at the time. I don't know where have you. If you've never been on, on that side, on the, on the one that's having have all the attention and, and, and getting those benefits, it, it's more difficult to that than it is to give. It, it's more difficult to receive than to give. And, and uh, I enjoyed going to those benefits when I was helping others, but I really wasn't enjoying that so much. And I was kind of resisting it and fighting it. And, and I finally realized, hey, this is... <coughs> This is crazy. This is not a bad thing. Man, this is a good thing. And it's a God thing. You know, God has been opening all these doors for you. And now here you are resisting it and, and wanting to keep these good people who are wanting to help you do something um, from allowing them to, to do that for you. So I finally got over my pride. You know, that's what it was. It's just your old pride. You know, I finally set that big pride to the side and, and, and allowed them to do that and let, let God do some some more working in my life, and, and he just continued to open doors, and, and, and it was amazing. Uh, so for, from all that giving, uh, I, I got to go to Panama, uh, I've, I've been three times now, and, uh, and because of that giving, and because of that going to Panama, uh, you know, I'm walking on my own, as you just noticed right then, I mean, uh, seriously, a year ago, I wouldn't have made that walk, I'd have probably had Miss Bean. Dr. Bean uh, had to come up here and, and help me. That's how I was at home. I had a walker at home. I had a brace in my leg. I just came back from Green Bay yesterday. Uh, we, we flew up there for a ball game, and, and it, it made me realize that, too. That just a year ago, we went to Green Bay for a game, and, and, and after my wife helped me get from the car to the atrium in there, they met me with a wheelchair. They wheelchaired me all the way across the stadium, up to my seat, and I sat in my chair. Then they came and got me after and wheelchaired me back. Uh, this time when I went, I walked the whole thing. I walked in the parking lot, walked up 59. We were on row 59. I walked up 59 steps of the row, went to my chair, got through, and went back, walked all the way down, walked around, walked back to the house, and all that. And, and I was just, and in fact, I was usually walking in front of the people that were with me and leading them. And, uh, and, and yeah, it is. It's wonderful. And it's not something I did, you know. But all that happened. All that miraculous thing. I'm telling you, it is miraculous. All that miraculous things happened because of three reasons. Uh, you know, n number one, because of the grace of God. There's no doubt about it. Number two, because I got to go to Panama with stem cells uh, and get stem cell treatments. And number three, it wouldn't have happened without all that giving, without all that generosity. Uh, of just hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, so I say that, uh, and I tell you that story just because I, I think I know what it feels like to be one of those folks uh, that the United Way helps. You know, you're doing that in different parts. All these agencies that he just talked about, each one of those are helping people that are in some kind of need. Uh, and, you're, and you're providing that same hope and that same help uh, that I've got. So, so I think I can relate to that, and, and, and it's amazing the impact that you have on, you have on so many lives, I mean, and sometimes we don't realize that. And once again, what I want you to remember is one of the big things is the hope you give them, because a lot of those people will find themselves in a situation that's pretty hopeless, and their hope meter was just like mine, really low. Uh, and, and it's something you, you may do, one of these agencies, and one of the, something United Way does, that just gives them some hope and makes that meter rise again and then they look for things and, and things turn around. Uh, so, so I say all that just to, just to tell you don't grow weary. Don't, don't go grow weary. You know, if you're here today 
just as a donator, uh, just as a giver, uh, don't grow weary of, of giving to the United Way uh, because good things are happening. Lives are being helped because of that. Uh, I'd have never made Panama without somebody without that giving. I'd have had all those plans and, and had all that, but I just sat at home thinking, well, I've you know, saved $150 now. I don't know when we we'll get to 40000 you know. But because of people like you, because of generous, good people like you, people are being helped. So don't grow weary of that giving. And if you're here with the United Way, uh, just helping people, reaching out and helping people, don't grow weary of doing that. Uh, you, you probably at times don't feel real appreciated, underappreciated. Uh, you know, you, you do so much, you, you're not sure uh, that people do see that. Well, believe me, uh, you're making a difference in people's lives, so keep doing that. Don't grow weary of helping. Don't grow weary of finding people. Uh, it's a good thing. And for all of us, for all of us, uh, I just want to leave you with this. Look, don't grow weary of trusting and leaning and believing in our good and gracious God. Don't grow weary of that. I just thank you, United Way, for allowing me to speak today, and, and, and I just say, uh, may God bless your mission and your efforts this year. Thank you very much.